Hi guys. Um, I'm not going to talk through the whole of this, but this is basically just a diorama um, that I built after my Yag Panther to put it in. Yag Panther is quite a big model, um, but I had this floorboard. You can see I've used it for a diorama before, and I've pulled the I've pulled the polystyrene and stuff off it because oh, I wasn't happy with how it was going. It was a trench that I was trying to build, but uh, you see how wide the the model is. It's just one of the kind of um, uh, MDF type floorboards, click together floorboards um, that I've got a few of uh, that I use because they're very rigid and they don't warp um, regardless of how much kind of liquid and plaster and glue and stuff you put on it. And they're, they're sturdy, but they're not too thick and they're not too heavy. Uh, so if you can, you know, if you're looking for bases and some, you know somebody's ripping up a floor... Uh, they're just perfect really the only thing is they're quite narrow so you have to think about the composition of it and the rough bits of polystyrene and glue that are still on there uh, are not too much of a worry to me because I'm going to have a, like a diagonal road through the middle and um, have rough on either side but also what I'm trying to do with dioramas recently if you've seen my other videos I am trying to add little buildings and building frontages and stuff just because I need the practice of making them I'm not very good at making them, and uh, practice makes perfect. But um, I I refuse to like <clears throat> spend the same amount of money as you know what you'd spend on the model, you know, for these little bits of blown out plastic buildings. Um, so I bought some of the extruded foam uh, that I've never used before. <laughs> because I just recycle polystyrene packaging when I use polystyrene in my dioramas. Cause it's getting covered anyway with um, with plaster and different materials, so it, it, it it's just a uh, gaining height polystyrene, and I I don't want to have to buy it just to just to put some height on a on a diorama, just to put some relief on a diorama. But I thought I'd invest in this because I'd seen somebody on YouTube uh, doing um, the stone and. Um, carving individual bricks and stuff into this, into this form. So I'd bought so I think I bought five pieces for about six or seven pound, um, five or six pieces, and um, including postage. So it's just experimenting with it really. Uh, I've no three D printer, so I'm not printing, you know, intricate window frames. Uh, it's all on a shoestring guys really you know I've got matchsticks if I wanted to do window frames I'd probably have used matchsticks but I, I, at the moment I'm just trying to do um, blown out buildings um, so I don't have to confront like details like that I'm just trying to get the actual shape and scale of the buildings at the moment I'm trying to build up to something a bit more intricate in time um, <clears throat> I mean, if you don't mind commenting and suggesting things, guys, I'm actually stuck because my next build is a chieftain, British chieftain tank. Uh, I think it's only got British decals in. Um, oh, and I don't know what setting I'm putting it in. Um, they were used in the Iran-Iraq war and they were used in the Iraq-Q8 war. But really, like nothing comes to mind. Um, and you look and you Google image chieftains, Mark Five chieftains. All you get is like chieftains on training exercises um, in Wales. Chieftains coming down the ramp from a warehouse. Chieftains in a car park in, in, on a military uh, base. You know you don't get them in in, in interesting. S settings really um so yeah any suggestions for a chieftain paint paint job and diorama possibilities you know if i can't think of anything i'll just do it i'll just do it paint it green and black and just stick it in the display cabinet um but you know mostly i make these models because i do want to put them in a setting i do want to make it interesting um then my next one after that is an M48 pattern, uh, which is which I can do another. I'm going to do like a maybe Huey 
like um, an urban Vietnam setting because um, I've seen some great pictures of it kind of with all the soldiers hunkering down behind it and in uh, tat street fighting in Vietnam. Um, so I'm okay with that one. Then I've got the Leopard 2, which is which is which was served in Afghanistan with the Danish army. So I might just do that in Afghanistan because you Google image Leopard 2, you just get the same as the Chieftain. You get it on exercises, just driving around the German countryside. And uh, that's the only downside with these modern tanks. <clears throat> put, you can't put them in a gritty... Um, interesting diorama but anybody got any ways of dealing with that or ideas for, for that kind of thing if you've come across that problem before um, or do you just not bother do you just put it on a on a patch of grass um, <clears throat> I'd probably spend as much time doing the dioramas as I do doing the tanks at the moment and the second world war ones obviously uh, give you loads of opportunities but um yeah, so carving the bricks just with a an old kebab skewer. Um, it's barbecue season, so I had some in. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, it worked okay, guys. Uh, just to do a brick building. And then um, you've got to have the 135 figures and the 135 tank to hand, I think, when you're doing this because... Uh, you got to keep checking the scales right, doors and windows and things like that. I use some of my acrylic um, filler that I use. It's like quick drying um, acrylic fi acrylic filler that uh, I use sometimes to fill gaps on the tank. And I kind of used it as like a texture on the side of this building. So it's got a brick front and a rendered side. Um, and then the colours was just a red and like a saddle brown and mixed together for the uh, for the front for the brickwork now you guys will know this already probably but um, you know this is how I do a tile roof I switched to the card that I've just salvaged from the, the model box um, there's another way of doing this where you, you cut an inch thick um, slice of card and you just do like a fringe of tiles along one side so then you don't have to position them individually you can just uh, attach the fringe and then attach the second one um, overlapping the, uh, the top <clears throat> So you're not cutting tiles out individually like this. You're, you're just um, cutting into a piece of card, uh, like 10 mil into a, a 20 mil thick piece of card. And then, well, the only the only advantage that this one, this has, this way of doing it, is you can, um, you get freedom to position them, to do damaged ones. Um, you know, it's, it's all, it's, it's based on, you know, old buildings, the brick, <clears throat> the brick work that I've done is like handmade bricks. You know, if you're doing a modern building, you'd have to be a lot more precise because things, factory made things tend to be more uniform. Um, but yeah, this is a Belgian farmhouse from the early 19th century. So I think you can be a bit rougher with it. I suppose that's why I like my older, uh, my older dioramas, my older settings for tanks. And if the First World War tanks weren't so expensive to buy, uh, I'd, do, I'd do a few of them. I'd do a few trench kind of uh, situations, which I'd love to do in the future. Would love to do that. The Mark IV coming over a trench, over a parapet. So like I said, purposefully doing this way of doing it because it is a little bit rustic and a little bit um, it's not uniform at all so just with PVA as with as with as with always you know give it plenty of time to dry uh, and make a good bond because um, you don't want to start painting these and them flaking up and coming off again uh, so leave it for 24 hours if you're doing if you do something like this 
Um, and then I tend to paint, paint it black and then, you know, go over it and over it and over it, weathering it and uh, lightening it a little bit. But it's a nice, it's a nice effect, I think, when it's finished. my usual mixture guys um, just molding plaster or plaster of Paris with um, the dregs from a coffee pot which I always save up and um, I'd say that's 50 or well, probably 60% coffee grounds and 10% coffee mixed in with it um, it's organic material but uh, I did notice the other day that I had some sitting in a pot uh, for for a couple of weeks waiting to be used or maybe maybe seven or eight days waiting to be used and it did skin over and go mouldy um, so threw it away but um, I don't know the science behind it but once it's mixed with the plaster and um, it's dried off and the water's evaporated from it after a day or two days uh, I've never had it go mouldy on a diorama um, so perhaps there was something in, in the water uh, when it went mouldy just on the side. Um, but yeah, I like it because it gives texture, I like it because it gives colour and you don't have to do a lot of painting. You just do a quick, just do like a wash over it of, of um, German black brown or something like that and uh, you've got easy um, earth earth effects 
<clears throat> and because of its adhesive qualities. Just recently, I tried to put I tried to put things into it while it's wet, rather than use glue later on. Um, so anything that's appropriate to put put obviously you can't static grass and stuff like that. So you can't do that because you've not even painted it yet. But for instance, the trees that I use, the um, and the buildings and walls and things like that, I try and put all that into it while it's um, while it's wet. It's better than it's more effective than using PVA later on. So it's quite a wet, a wet mix, this guys. But I'm not trying to build any any really surface height or relief. Um, <clears throat> it's just for the effect of mud being on the ground rather than a, rather than a f perfectly flat surface. Like I say, roughly um, putting a road through the middle of the diorama, which is why I'm using a flat piece of foam because that'll be my that'll be my road. That'll level my road. Yeah, at this consistency, I think it takes probably two hours to dry fully, I would say. Maybe just over. Um, so you have to put it on knowing that you've got other things you can be doing afterwards. And um, it's not thick enough or deep enough to put my my trees my trees in it. I don't think so. I think I glue I I glued them on later on.
So they're just seed heads out of the garden, uh, or dead flower heads rather. Um, I think it's from a a sedum. The plant's called, I think. Um, and then I've got some lichen I bought off eBay. Some static grass off eBay that I've not got an applicator for. I just tuft up. I'm just using tufts. And then um, I bought some self adhesive um, tufts that came. They looked better on eBay than they did when they arrived. <clears throat> it's just a bit of variety, a bit of a different colour. Um, so you can see the mud effect there. It's just German black brown. And um, I just apply the different materials that I've bought. Just trying at the best effect. It's just like a little farmhouse on a road. Um, I've put some tufts growing out of the brick as well. Just to kind of show the age and the fact it's been derelict for a little while. Uh, I think the trees are good to scale. I um, don't know what you guys think. And then uh, some of the plaster that I smashed up for my Afghanistan bio, if you've seen that, if you've seen that video, uh, the one with the Fuchs, <clears throat> I've put that on the road as kind of loose, loose rubble and stones. Um, with some PVA, some diluted PVA. You see the PVA is still wet there on everything, still white, layer of white. Um, there's the roof. So I had um, figures, a figure that came with the tank, the unpainted one. I bought the Tamiya um, German oil drums and oil cans set. And then I had two officers already. I think they were ICM from another diorama that I'd broken down. Um, I had a review of my dioramas recently, and that's why the base had been previously used. Uh, Two or three of my dioramas didn't make the cut, so I salvaged all the stuff off them and uh, decided to use the boards again, just threw the polystyrene away. Obviously, I had to heat the tank driver's arm just to straighten it out so he was leaning on the barrel uh, instead of both of his elbows being bent. But quite pleased with it, guys. Um, yeah. Could do some more detail in the house. The windows are a bit kind of empty voids. But pleased with the layout, composition of it. And um, let me know what you think. And like and subscribe, guys. If you want to see more videos like this. Thanks for watching.